Welcome, everyone, to Spiritic Media. This one's going to be fun. This one's going to be really fun. You hear everybody else, and hey, I'm not knocking anyone. I did ask Danielle to come on a little bit too late. Um, she already had promised someone else that she'd be coming on, so she couldn't make it. But that's fine. Everyone else is how do I say telling you what the amendments say giving you opinions based off of what amend these amendments mean contact orders um all of those things right and nothing's wrong with that that information is very necessary And we're going to talk about that some, but the majority of what I'm about to talk about is what they what they knows behind all of those amendments and request orders. That's what we're about to talk about here in the short short moment. Uh, James is going to be joining us here in a minute, and. We will get all of that started because James has a very good outlook on the legal part of it. I'm just really good at getting dirt. I don't know if y'all have ever watched the lawyer movies or stuff, but you got the guy that knows how to put it out there for the legal side to understand. And you got the people that dig it up. Just what it is. So, instead of waiting too long... To start talking about this, Florida states asked for all of the tax work from the ACC since 2010. Why do you think that's important? You might want to, you know, take small guesses in their head. You have a, a pretty good idea what it is. And tell you what it is. They know for a fact. The ESPN and Raycom Sports has been getting way more or paying the ACC way more than what the ACC is paying to its members. You don't have to believe that, but it's the truth. Why do you think ESPN and the ACC is fighting tooth and nail not to show anything? Why do you think they're trying to get it dismissed in the state of Florida? <coughs> it gets way dirtier. And I'm ready to start dropping dirt. It's just I'm trying to let enough people get in here so they can hear all of this great stuff. Now, I do appreciate all of y'all for being in here. If you haven't shared it or liked it, please do so um, at this moment because it would be um, really great, to be honest with you. But, let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know all that. Multimedia agreement, July 8th. It's kind of what I'm covering now. All right, so here we go. Y'all remember me telling you about four schools in this conference that really doesn't want this stuff coming out. Y'all remember what I was talking about. People started guessing on which schools they were. People started guessing on who they thought it was. What schools... I did not see what the athletic director from North Carolina said. Um, it could either be really good and they're trying to cover their ass or it's going to be really bad and they're trying to fight it. Uh, but look, 
put it this way. North Carolina. The University of North Carolina is one of those schools that received extra money, but there's no evidence of it. Wake Forest is one of those schools that received extra money, and there's no record of it. Anybody want to take a wild guess on the last two? Take a wild guess on the last two. I gave you NC and I gave you Wake. Who's the last two? But some guesses come up. So remember, I told you it was originally four. I come to find out there's six. Y'all have already named them, or it might be seven. Let's see. You've got UNC, NC State, Wake Forest, North Carolina. Well, hold on. North Carolina, North Carolina State, Wake Forest, Duke, Boston College. And nobody else is really who I'm about to say isn't a full member of this conference. One of the biggest brands in all sports. They're not even a full member. Who's that, everybody? And they're also the ones that receive the most. Who? Notre Dame. Yes, seriously, Notre Dame. If you go look at the payout structure, okay, with Notre Dame not being in a conference, for them making it to the playoffs, they get paid $80 million. That's more than the ACC gets paid as a conference to make it to the <coughs> – <clears throat> Excuse me, to make it to the playoffs. We're not talking about little amounts of money in each and every year since 2000. And, or was it 16 when they reamended or 14? Excuse me, in 2014 when they when they redid the contract. There's a bunch of teams that's been getting stuff handed to them under the table. A bunch of schools been getting handed stuff under the table. Why is that news not coming out? Because there's not enough people that know about it yet. There will be. No. I've been telling y'all we were leaving this conference for two years. Now, this year, all big media wants to talk about is that Florida State and possibly others are leaving the ACC conference and all of these hoo-hahs, right? It won't take two years for this one to come out. It won't. Florida State wants all text messages. Here's another one, y'all. You're going to love this one. Florida, State's want, Florida State wants all social, all text messages, all emails, all phone call recordings, all any types of communication whatsoever if they're handwritten, handwritten letters between ESPN, the ACC, and the College Football Committee and any of those thereof. Meaning, if the College Football Committee talked to ESPN, ACC wasn't involved, we want those. ESPN talked to ACC without College Football Committee. We want those two. They covered so many grounds in these requests. Now, what could it be that Florida State wants from the College Football Committee, Playoff Committee, other than if there was any bullshit done to keep Florida State out? What would they want other than that? Anybody want to take a guess? It's easy. How much money was or did the SEC pay the college football committee to make sure their teams got in? I say teams because Texas is technically an SEC team. We all know this. We know Alabama is. Or how much did the ACC get paid to shut up and not say anything on Florida State's behalf? Or how much did the college football committee pay the SEC and then the SEC turn around and pay the ACC to shut up or vice versa? 
How much money would it have took for everybody to shut up and make really stupid shit happen? The really stupid shit that did happen. How much money does that take? Did Florida State get any of that money? No. Did ESPN get any of that money? Yeah. Did the SEC get any money for it? Yeah. We haven't been in a room yet. We have not even had the hearing yet. These are all pre-trial or pre-hearing um, statements that are being put out into the file paperwork. No one's been in there yet. What other dirty stuff could have possibly been going on with this? Um, Corgan, Boo Corgan, Bob, whatever his name is, Boo Corgan, he's the NC State guy. The other reason why, see what they did was they tried to play hardball. If you've got UNC, NC State, Notre Dame, um, and the rest of them, Wake Forest, and Boston College, all coming against Florida State, and from, from whatever their reasons are to come against Florida State to say we're not allowed to do this, we can't leave the conference, we have to be here till 2036, don't say nothing, don't bring this up. Why do you think everybody didn't stand up beside us? Why is Clemson and Miami the only two schools that were willing to potentially stand up on this? i tell you why Virginia didn't, and Virginia Tech didn't, and Duke also received money. But why they didn't stand up was because what they are making from this media deal is much more than what they could anticipate from anywhere else. They don't move the needle. They do not get enough viewership for this to matter to them. We have been paying their bills for so long. And I'm not trying to get back on something I've already talked about. But we have paid all of the ACC's bills for so long. They're, they don't want to change anything. Why would they? They don't move the needle. They don't get one or two or three or four million people watching the game. Unless they're playing us. But ain't nobody really watching for them. They're watching Florida State. So what is it that ESPN and the ACC need to get out of this? So this is what's going to happen. ESPN and the ACC is going to stick with each other until they figure out it's better for them to fight against one another. Why would they ever do that? Why? It's pretty simple. When Florida State gets them dead to red, and I'm pretty sure most of y'all know what that means, but when they get them dead to red, they're going to turn on one another. What do most organizations or people do when they're coming and they've got you by the you-know-what? They got you by the gonads. What do you do? Turn and start pointing fingers. Oh, no, it was so-and-so. Oh, no, such-and-such did it. And everybody starts trying to cut deals. And then they start negotiating. And they try to negotiate. What if I told you that the former, this is so wild, that the former non, non Phillips, what's his damn name? Was it Swafford? But what if I told you that he got eerily rich off of all of this that's happened? Wouldn't it be hard to believe, would it? Yeah, Swafford. There's also another guy that used to work for ESPN. Forget what his name is. Anybody else know his name? Used to be the president of ESPN during all this stuff that happened. You know how much money he made off of all this? Not, not the one now, the one that was there before. But anyways, it was before Phillips. It was like... I don't remember his name, Swift, something, something like that. What if I told you that 
pre-2010, these people were worth about quarter quarter of a million dollars, making about 250 grand a year. But Skipper, thank you. But by 2015 or 14, 14 year, 14 season, these two guys that were one president of ESPN, one of the ACC, both somehow ended up being worth over $11 million. Can't find no trade records. Can't find any new businesses made. How did you become worth so much money in four years with you? You weren't a gambler. You didn't go to the casinos. You didn't get in the real estate market. You weren't in the stock market. There was no new businesses created. How do you go from 250 grand a year to being worth almost $11 million in four years? How do you pull that off? What shady shit's getting done for that to happen? Huge shout out to Jeff Hill with the $20 donation. He said, doesn't go to trial. Uh, they're not going to allow it to go that far because of discovery. Hell, be all, we all know that probably the ACC and ESPN did some crooked crap. And here's the problem, Jeff. I agree, but here's the problem. It's so much deeper than crooked. It's asinine. It's some shit that'll get you in some real trouble. I don't know if y'all ever watched Life, but they say that uh, where Eddie Murphy talks about going to the upper room, this shit will take you down or up the road. They'll put your ass in jail for this. That's what they're going to do. If this goes to discovery, I don't know how many millions of dollars that ESPN gets fined, the ACC gets fined. Certain universities that took under the table money gets fine. Does anybody receive the death penalty sports wise? Um, anybody in between this? How many people lost their jobs at ESPN over the past couple of years? And really started in about 2015 and 16 when they really started laying people off. It ain't hard to find people that want to talk about this shit. It ain't hard to find people that know really what was going on at those times. You know how many people lost their jobs at Raycom Sports over that same amount of time? It's not hard to find people that, that were in the know, that want to talk, that want to tell you what they know. Oh... Here's the thing, everyone. There's going to be so many people that are going to get looked at, okay? After this is over, after Florida State has nothing to do with it anymore and Florida State's gone, do you know how many people are going to get investigated by the feds? You know how many people are going to be looked into because of accusations? You know how many people are going to be looked into because there's going to be some facts brought out whether people want to see it or not, want to hear it, whether the ACC or ESPN wants it? It's coming. Every time I've told y'all, wait till Florida State posts their next one. Wait till they drop their next amendment. Oh, son. If they get to drop the next ones. Mm -mm -mm. What's going on, big game? Uh oh, can't hear you. Come back. And you and your camera went out.
That's what I've been telling people. I'm the only one that said I don't think Florida State pays anything to get out. I really don't. I don't think if Florida State shows the ACC what's going on and ESPN. James, I'm about to add you. Hold on one second. That Florida State ends up paying a dime. I really, really don't. All right, big game. I got you on here now. He's got a self muted, so everybody don't worry about. Be here. My bad. What's going on, brother? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Um, I'll tell you what I what I've told them so far, real quick, and I'll sum it up faster than not. I have a lot of really good people telling me that Notre Dame. North Carolina, Duke, um, Boston College, and NC State has been receiving some sums of money under the table from the ACC for the past few years. Oh, wow. So there's a reason why Florida State's asking for their taxes, the ACC's taxes, mm -hmm. because there's a lot of differences in what the ACC was supposed to be getting paid from ESPN and Raycom Sports. There's an indifference in what they've been told and an indifference of what they've been told after it's been done again. And now they're getting told something completely different. So the question is, let us see your taxes. Because you, you know, them as in the ACC says that they've made X. But the problem is, is they can't even tell you what they made. Then you top it off with Swalford. You top it off with Skipper, who was... Skipper was the head of ESPN. And I mean, here's my question. I'm going to ask both of y'all this so you get it. So if you're making $250,000 a year, you're not a gambler. You don't go into casinos. You're not in the stock market heavily. And you've started no new businesses. Within four years, how do you go from being worth $250,000 a year to being worth almost $11 million in that four-year span? You're flat out doing some really shady shit. Yeah. So you got no vices, basically? Basically. I mean, you can blow it on women and, and blow. I don't know how a business does. I don't know how, I don't know how a conference would do that, but, you know. But yeah, no, see, this is what happened. What they're, what they're starting to notice is, is why Skipper moved on. Why the guy before um, – What's his name? Swalford. Why he moved on. Well, for some reason, both of these gentlemen, after they made this deal with ESPN and the ACC, once this deal happened, within three to four years, both of them step back. They they take they go on the road. They, they say, all right, I'm done. I don't want to do this job no more. But while they were doing the job, you're making somewhere around two hundred fifty to $300,000 a year. Your net worth pops up as you're worth, I don't know, three hundred to five hundred thousand dollars but somehow both of these bastards are worth almost the exact same amount of money now now this dated back to 2016 when someone found out what someone's net worth was and then someone else found out what the other someone's net worth was and both of them were around about the same exact number it's like ten million four hundred eighty some odd thousand dollars but no one can find where they started making this money they don't have a business they don't have small businesses started they didn't invest in the stock market heavily enough to make that kind of money where did the money come from well the thing is it's just like in politics there's certain you know envelopes full of cash that are passed on you're signing brother-in-law deals well hey if you do this then you'll get so much on the back end it's always the kickbacks I mean, it happens in every aspect of business. It just never, it typically doesn't happen at that level. And it's typically when you do good business, um, like it, to where like everybody's made enough money to where the kickbacks don't like make anybody look crazy. And that's the problem is everybody looks crazy right now. Here's my favorite part. 
Florida State basically tells the ACC, ESPN, and anyone else that's involved in this matter. It's it's kind of funny to us that no one's asking us for any type of discovery. They don't want to see any types of financial records. They don't want to see any type of messages back and forth. But every time that we ask for anything, they want to – what's the word I'm looking for? Object. Every amendment that Florida State put down, they objected Based file, you know, they filed an objection. They obviously can't object because they're not in a hearing, but they object by filing an objection to each one of them that they put out. It's because they got something to hide. Oh, they got and more the thing is, and the thing is, Chris, what if the certain percentages that all these schools are should get, the people that are in charge of the ACC didn't take a percentage of that? That's another another way they can make their, you know, what they're worth even higher. Take this for a matter. So when we allowed Notre Dame to play in our conference without forcing them into our conference, Notre Dame made more money than any team in the ACC conference from the ACC conference, not just their NBC deal, but they made more money from the ACC conference than any team that's a full member. What if, what if they took that money that they told the other members that they were going to get paid partials on because there wasn't a full season, but they did get paid for it and they halved it with Notre Dame? Yeah. I know a lot of this shit sounds like conspiracies to people, but I wouldn't be up here saying this shit if somebody's not telling me. I swear I wouldn't. The reason, if you pay attention to everything that Florida State's asking for, the conversations between the college football committee and ESPN, the conversations between the ACC and ESPN throughout from 2000 and some odd to 2000 and some odd, the conversations that were between Skipper and Swafford, the conversations that were between so-and-so and Raycom Sports, they're asking for very specifics. They're not just saying we want everything. Even though it covers everything, they are specifically – pointing out each individual at each place. They're specifically pointing out each um whom the two companies would have talked to each other. They want emails, social media. They went, I mean, they kind of was asking them when they said it. I thought it was kind of cool. It's kind of a dick move, but they said they wanted social media messages. They wanted emails. They wanted text messages. Hell, they want all the handwritten letters that went in between all these people. Like They got specifics on... Maybe they did communicate by writing letters because most people would forget to ask for that nowadays. Florida State's lawyers didn't forget to ask for it. There's a specific reason that Florida State's attacking this thing the way that they are. People thought that after the ACC responded, I guess it was, was it Monday they responded? And then Tuesday, I mean, the very next day on Tuesday, Florida State releases all of this. And what's crazy is when you sue somebody, you typically want discovery because there's like, wait, again, I think um, Mark was asking this yesterday on Mark Rogers show, you know, why are they going through the process? Like, like we, or it seems like Florida state has a counter to everything the ACC does. And I was like, and the reason why it seems that way, is because the AC, because Florida state knows why they're suing the ACC. The ACC only sued because they thought FSU was going to sue. Like they were completely content in the situation that they were in, they, you know, so they don't really have anything to ask for in the scope. Like, what are they going to ask? They're going to be like, um, I want you to show me how upset you guys were. I want you to show me the war chant message boards, which you can't. Um, I think that's the, the group that they're accusing of, you know, some of the other stuff, but war chant isn't an entity of Florida state. It's, um, they don't have anything to discover. And, if you don't have anything to discover, you know what that typically means? You don't have a case. So why are we here outside of you just trying to make my life harder? And just give me what I want. And that's out. I don't want to be here. So give us what we want. Well, I want to know what, you know, I was telling people before both of y'all got on here is I think that the ACC and ESPN will take this as far is till they find out that Florida State really has them by the balls. And then they're going to start turning on one another and pointing fingers. 
And then the ESPN is going to turn around and offer or have the SEC offer for a state this opportunity to leave the ACC conference with no penalty, bring you in as a full member of the SEC, and that's going to be their offer. I'm not saying we're going to take that. I'm just saying I think that's what they're going to do to try to fix what's going to come out if they take it that far. We've done been saying this for a long time. It's never going to go this far. But this is the exact same thing that the ACC did with uh, Maryland. No different. Here's the issue. Maryland isn't protected by the sunshine laws. Maryland couldn't do a lot of these things that Florida State's doing. That's why I told everybody there's a reason why Florida State has led this whole thing. One, they're a public university. Two, they've got enough money to fight it. Three, the sunshine laws protect us because if Miami did it, and James has pointed this out many times, they're a private school. There's certain things they cannot do. Clemson is in South Carolina. They do have some sunshine laws there. But Clemson ain't got the type of what, what's needed to do this, unfortunately. Chris, what you just mentioned about ESPN probably intervening and letting us out with no penalty but to join the SEC would be their way of we know they bring big time views. We want to we we still want to make that FSU money. I totally agree with you on that. I totally could see that. But I believe Alford wants completely to be done with Disney, ESPN, everything. And he's got his eyes set on even more money with the Big Ten. Am I correct? Yeah. Um, Alford McCullough, which is the president, yeah, the majority of the uh, board of trustees, everyone is looking to make Florida State University the flagship University of Florida. Not saying that you can't do that in the SEC, but you're doing it with Florida right beside you. It's uh, I'll, I won't say it's simpler, but it's more prestigious to be in the Big Ten as far as academics go. I'm not mm-hmm. saying that the SEC is stupid because they're not. They have some really good schools. But the Big Ten academically is known to be the best that there is outside of the Ivy League schools. Some of their schools compete with the Ivy League schools and all of the metrics that are looked at. Florida State's been trying to get there. And they've done a phenomenal job over the past four years, for sure, um, as far as academics go. The the graduation percentage, um, just all of the things that, that the Big Ten looks for, Florida State's been making sure that it's getting done. So, yes, there was no, there's no reason for Florida State to want to do all these things unless they want to be in the Big Ten. They wouldn't have to. Why put the resources and money into it if it's not something that you're looking to do? It just – you're spinning your wheels at that point. You're not you, – you could start making money if you were – if your goal was to get in the SEC. That's when you start doing all this other stuff to start competing in those other areas. Florida State's been spending a lot of money over the past couple of years, a lot. Mm-hmm. There's a, They're investing. They're not spending money or blowing money. They're investing within themselves to make them that more appealing – to whomever the conference is that we're going to go to, which in my eyes, you you didn't need a better stadium or a a better look for the SEC, which kind of do for the Big Ten. It's about being the hottest girl in the South. I mean, most of their schools are Midwest and stuff to that nature. So you got to stand out amongst the swamp and USF that's going to have a stadium. Like you have to stand out. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes you stand out. It, and that's why they're putting this money into the into Dope Campbell. That's why they're putting money into the standalone facilities. It's all about, look at me. I'm just as good as everything that you got. On top of that, we win. On top of that, we went from the 34th best college to the 19th best college in two years. As far as public universities go. Does this hurt the SEC? Because that's what I'm waiting for. Is the next amendment that's dropped? We want all conversations between ESPN and the SEC. 
We want all conversations between the SEC conference and the college football committee. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's no telling what Florida State's going to ask for. We can – um, it won't hurt the SEC. The SEC is going is in a contract. Well, a good contract with ESPN already. So um, they've got their stuff. They're going to be one of the power two. But what it can do is just sell – the biggest thing is in all of this – it well, I guess it could hurt if Florida State finds out that the SEC was just as just as complicit as the ACC or ESPN, then the lawsuit shifts. It no longer just becomes a lawsuit against the ACC. It becomes one that you're not going to drop because you got what you want. It becomes one that you will drop once you get your money and once you feel like you're um you were treated properly. Um and it just even gives more ammunition to a governor who's ready to go all in whenever he gets a chance um, as far as, uh, you know, shooting at ESPN, Disney, you know, this would be, he couldn't beat Disney head on, but if he could take it to Disney this way, then he would definitely um, be appreciative of it. So it's a lot of, um, it's why I said they don't really want this to get to where it gets to, um, <clears throat> especially for when, you know, if you go looking, you're going to find it, um, especially if they know some specific things that they want to find and they go looking for that. That's when it's going to get really, that's when it could get a little, little difficult for everybody else. I'm ready for them to blow the can off of it. I just don't think. Okay. So here's my question. It's if, like, we're, it's like we're giving the ACC all sorts of opportunities to bow out before we blow the complete lid off of it. And it's like, it's just like, it's going over the ACC's head. I think there, the ACC is expecting it to go very similar that it did to Maryland. That, that's their expectation of the situation. I think they're sadly mistaken because Florida state, this is personal in so many ways. As much as business can be personal, this is personal. Whether people want to admit that or believe that, that's up to them, but it's the truth. Florida State is not okay with ESPN. Florida State is not okay with the ACC, especially when Phillips comes out and says that he allotted for us to be in the college football playoffs. Where the fuck did that happen at? When did he say this? He said it that he did it, at the ACC championship game in basket, men's basketball. They're bringing up what happened with us, or Jim Phillips is. He's bringing it up in a men's basketball game that Florida State's got nothing to do with. The hell are you talking about us for in line and saying that you committed for us to get into the playoffs? Where's the letter? Where's the interview? Where is any of the shit that you said you did? Because we don't see it. Now, the SEC's commissioner was out there on – ESPN, multiple times. Nick Saban was on there multiple times. Their coach was doing it as far as the school. ESPN was saying, well, we think Bama should be in it. So if you put Bama in it, you should put Texas in it because Texas beat Bama at home. It's all about who got the cameras put on. And that's the other question. When does Florida State say we want to see that all that information from in between the SEC and uh, the commissioner to the the college football committee? When do those conversations get talked about? There's just too much shit going on because you know how much money the SEC made off of Alabama getting there, just getting to the playoffs. I mean, to fucking kill them. The SEC wasn't going to be represented if they put Florida State in there. If they let it fall the way that it fell, that Bama beat whomever. I mean, they should have let Georgia stay in, I guess, but I don't know what they would have done. That's why they had to do what they had to do. It wasn't fitting the narrative. If, if Texas wouldn't have beat Alabama, they could have left them out. If anyone else would have beaten Bama other than Texas, Florida State would have been in is what they say. But it's funny, it's funny how 
an SEC school and a future SEC school who was going to be SEC the very next season, both got in. Two Big Ten teams got in, too, technically. Yeah. Isn't that funny how it works? And now in the 12-team playoff, they're favored to get the majority of the spots. The ACC agreed to it. The Big 12 agreed to it. Hell, Notre Dame agreed to it. But it's funny that Notre Dame is going to make as much money if they make it to the playoffs as the entire conference of the ACC and more money than the Big 12. If they make it, they're getting $80 million. It's all crazy, man. <clears throat> I don't but, think I don't I don't I don't really understand that because they they base Notre Dame off what they were in the in the sixties seventies and eighties not what they've been they what they've been is a mediocre team that's had maybe a one or two good years. All I can tell you is, is Notre Dame has been getting paid for a long time, and it ain't gonna stop anytime soon. They're going to get paid no matter what. And, I, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, they make independent look really good at times. But at others, it looks like shit. Um, I'm, I'm just ready for – I think best-case scenario <clears throat> when it comes to North Carolina's case in North Carolina that they basically freeze that one. They put it on the pause. And they let the thing work out in Florida first based off of the sunshine laws and the things that are protected also in the grand rights because that's what they agreed to. Um, they also, um, and Danielle said, and I was trying to get her to come on, but she already promised someone else that she was, that she was coming on. So she couldn't make it uh, for me, which I waited way too late to ask those questions. But um, long story short is and we've talked about it since it happened, that they filed a case against Florida State before we ever did anything. They did it based off of what they guessed we were going to do. And Danielle made a great post on Twitter about it. And that's when I when I saw it, I was like, well, damn, let me see if I can get her to come on. Well, I was late. Someone else already got her. And good for them. That's great. I'm, I'm glad. But I don't think people have as much fun on their shows as I do because I'm going to talk – major shit on what I know and what I'm getting told. Like everybody's like, oh, so uh, Mike Norvell's in Ireland. I thought he'd be here recruiting, blah, blah, blah. Mike Norvell's there because Alfred can't be. It's simple. He, someone of matter has to be there. And with Alfred recovering from a surgery, it was Mike. He's the next man in line that's got to go. So I don't know why everybody's freaking out about that, but it is what it is. Florida State, it's almost, not almost, Florida State has this entire case planned out. No one turns around and puts in that many amendments the very next day and request the very next day all they were waiting on was the ACC to do what they did on Monday so they could turn around Tuesday and drop theirs. I'm not saying that they're the smartest people in the world, but damn, they're pretty smart. They're they're literally waiting for the ACC to respond each and every time. As soon as they respond, it's either within hours or the very next day they're dropping it. Because they know what they've got. Where the ACC doesn't have a case – like James was talking about earlier, Florida State knows they have a case. And I think once – what happens if North Carolina's judge does, though, even though I think he's just going to call it? What if he does dismiss it? Just – it probably what, it lessens the, the, um, the strength of their argument. So they're going to probably be more apt to go ahead and, you know, let's go ahead and solve this, resolve this thing. So you would um, would you say them pausing it is a big win for Florida State though? Like even pause, if they just pause it, a pause, a stay, throwing it out, all that's a victory. Um, when it comes to the whole situation, the longer this, 
the biggest thing is they what they don't want is to have this go to trial. Um, and or unless they start because again, if they were if they were asking for anything in discovery, then they would have some some really good things to eat, either either counter or they would have some stuff that shows that Florida State, like again, ESPN is saying that basically this was a felony. Um, like, you know, you would think if if I figured somebody was committing a crime, I would probably be asking some very pointed questions to be able to prove that in a court of law because that would be a hell of a counter, even though theirs was grasping at straws. Now, they just, they just don't have much. And I think if they get beat where they actually set up the case or – they get stalled or delayed, and I the floor. They're not going to do that in the state of Florida. They're going to be all full speed ahead. It just makes them. They, they know they're not prepared for. They're not prepared for battle. So, what do you think it looks like? Like the the Florida judge, if he sees them, you know, stay the case in North Carolina or drop it. I mean, is that to me? It's that that would sound like look, they got y'all's ass. That's just how to me. Was it a big mistake for them to file the the case against Florida State first? Was that a huge mistake on their part? It could be in multiple ways, in two different ways. One, that's there's a legal issue with doing that. Two. The grant of right says that you're supposed to do it in the state of Florida because of the their public university. I think they, I think they jumped the gun. They should have. They could have waited if they would have waited until, let's just say Monday, because obviously the board of trustees meeting is public. Yeah. So if they would have waited until they actually saw it, and in that meeting, they basically declared what their intentions were. Monday morning, eight a.m. Same effect, right? Um, but they were trying to what they were trying to do is try to if I file first, that's where we have to try the case. And that's what their real argument is. And it was trying to get a home court advantage. And the problem is that's just not how this works mm -hmm. per your bylaws or per, per anything. Um, basically more so per your bylaws. Your bylaws clearly state that um basically the, the member school gets to pick where the trial happens and you know you're you're breaking your own rules but they just tried to they tried to get ahead of it and i think this was a situation where getting ahead of it didn't really do what you thought it was going to do no it's like it's like the acc's playing checkers and we're playing chess um and by them go ahead and filing first it's just a guilty guilty conscience speaking and they tried to they tried to basically play a bluff game and bully us into backing down and it's backfired what what i think is weird is, is you tried this with maryland yes it was a different time there was a little bit of things that were different than now but you tried this with maryland and you failed now you're trying the same thing and expecting a different result and that's the definition of insanity mm-hmm that's what the ACC looks like to the public eye right now. They look like a bunch of dipshits. And if I don't get anything else out of this, if Florida State doesn't get out immediately um, for either very little money or none, at least I get to say that they made them look like complete asshats throughout this process. Because Florida State's definitely done that. They're always two or three steps ahead. They've always got a backup to whenever, any time that the ACC drops anything, and it to me, it's just – I think the judge, when the ACC starts, whether it's in North Carolina or whether it's in Florida or both, when the ACC starts saying that they don't want to give up this or they don't want to do that because of this reason and that reason and the uh, grant of rights, I can hear the judge saying, spare the court. Just spare us. And it, literally, it sounds like it's so much bullshit that they're trying to toss out there that you can – the judges are lawyers. I mean, I know, I know everybody knows that. But a judge is going to get really pissed if you start coming at their intelligence. 
Like, those are egotistical motherfuckers. I mean, and I think everybody just, you know that. There's very fair ones, and there's very not fair ones. I don't think there's any in between. And I would say that there, 90% of them, if you act like you're talking over their head, which I think the ACC looks like they're trying to do them multiple, multiple times, um, and they ain't even gotten in the courtroom. It's just the way that they're moving, I think it irritates the hell out of people in the, in the legal world. So I would love for Florida State's lawyers to get the ACC lawyers in there and have that conversation. Because I think it, it would be just hugely beneficial to us in, in multiple ways. I, I don't think that the ACC can see it going wrong in North Carolina, and I think they're sadly mistaken. I think it can go really, really wrong really, really fast for them because their their merit of what they're standing on makes no sense. It, it just doesn't. It makes no sense what they're trying to do. You know, the more and more I keep saying there's no way this is going to go to trial, they don't want discovery to come out, the more and more I think the ACC is actually stupid enough to let it go to trial. I don't know. And if they make it, if they let it go or if Florida State doesn't allow it, you know what I'm saying? Like when I say not allow it, I mean not allow us to negotiate and they want to push for it. I feel bad for the ACC. I feel bad for ESPN. I feel bad for Raycom Sports. I feel bad possibly for the SEC conference. But I actually don't feel bad for any of them at all. I'm ready for Florida State to either take the spear or take a, a size 15 cleat or boot and shove that summit so far up their asses that the world knows it. Get them screaming at each other. Get them to start pointing fingers at one another. I don't really care about what happens to everybody else. And I'm yeah. starting to think that Jim Phillips is a dumbass. Look how much money. I don't feel sorry for him. Look how much money has been made. Off the, off the freaking backs of the major universities, which there's only really two that have brought in money to the ACC, while Raycom Sports and all them have, have benefited off that <clears throat> shitty-ass deal that was signed behind closed doors. I don't feel sorry for any of them. Hell, they can all go to bankruptcy court for all I care. James, what do you think about the part – I don't want to misquote it, but the part where um, the ACC didn't get the votes before they filed the lawsuit against Florida State, that's also a huge legality issue. Did you look in, Did you see any of that and have any thoughts on that one? We have in the state of Florida, one of the amendments we, we put up is case law. And that's the part that's crazy. It's like in the state of Florida – um, that's illegal, and they when how and how it became illegal was basically through um HOAs. It was H HO, uh, HOA basically um they vote they they ruled on something and then went back and and voted on it at the next HOA meeting, which you can't you couldn't do. Like you had you have to do it. You have to um vote first, then you rule. And if in the state of Florida, that's one reason why. They'll probably throw a lot of the stuff out that the um, ACC has already has already tried to implement. But um, again, that's kind of the cool the, the 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 thing the ACC was banking on is there's not a ton of case law between conferences avoiding contracts like this per se. But there's a lot of other. But what happens is you have law that is similar enough to it. Basically, a HOA is a bunch of different people of different homeowners saying that we're going to let somebody else make the rules for our property. And it's kind of essentially the same thing as a conference. So, um, you know, that was one of the very interesting things. And just everything that Florida state had, they were already ready to pick it apart. And as I was telling, um, George or Mark Rogers, the, the ACC didn't wait to the last, didn't just pop this up, um, spur of the moment. They just waited to the last day, the last possible day. It's just Florida State wants this to be done. Yeah. And typically how it works is you have a certain amount of days to respond. Florida State's not waiting until the end of the um, time. Um, 
to, to respond. They're responding as soon as they get it, so that it puts it keeps putting the pressure on the ACC. So that's just the beauty in it. And this is completely off of subject, but James, you did a multitude of interviews uh, with Florida State athletes that are that entered into the draft. And everybody's got this narrative around them right now in which Nick Saban did not help. I'm not saying that he's not telling somewhat of the truth. But he said that all players want to know is how much they're getting paid now. Hmm. How many players did you interview that said that Florida State picked them more so than they picked Florida State? I mean... Don't, even the ones that were – well, no, most of them were transfers or they played before – or they were brought in before Norville. But, you know, 12 out of 12 um, basically said the same thing. Um, I, ha- I I think what Saban said has truth. Right. But he doesn't get to say it. He doesn't articulate. He can't articulate the way he wanted yeah, to, I think. It, or it's kind of like the devil doesn't get to, to say that people in hell are picking on him. Right. He created hell. Well, he created hell. I don't know if that's the greatest. Don't hit me on biblical canon if I did that correctly, but hopefully you get the gist of it. And what I mean by this is um, you, you're the one who was, you've been purchasing players. For, for a while, the bag man was in college football before NIL. And the argument is, is the third string player shouldn't be asking for big time money. And I agree with you. So do what you've done for years. Let the third string player walk. When I before I even before I ever got into like media um, and it's on my. Nick Saban was the tour. Matter of fact, Nick Saban is the reason why the SEC for a while put restrictions on signing. He was a notorious oversigner. But even if he wasn't, in 25 scholarships is your maximum, right? 25 times four is 100. 85 scholarships is what you can get, is, is the maximum that you can have. So if you're signing 25 players every year, you'll have 100. So here's what happened every year. 15 players magically got in trouble at Alabama. <laughs> Every year. And they were always at 85. Didn't matter. Always happened. 15 guys. Me and my boy OJ would always keep a track of it. We were like, they're going to always get under it. There was no outrage then. The transfer portal. How? What? I, you know how I heard about the transfer portal and found out about the transfer portal? I found out from my friends who coach college who said, we're going to put kids in the transfer portal mm-hmm. that we're trying to get rid of. Now, COVID happens. They relax APR. Bring back APR. You wouldn't have the transfer portal problems. Make it one and done. One, one transfer, one transfer, and you're done. Unless it's a you know, or or you have to appeal for the second one. They could do that, but they choose not to. But as far as the money goes, I have a hard time listening to people who get paid ten million dollars, who are one of the first to pay coordinators. In the two million dollars, who have who employ people on their staff who make hundreds of thousands of dollars for off field jobs, mm-hmm. who had a school not only by their house in Jupiter, Florida, but also by their house in Alabama, who had two cars along with a Ferrari collection, along with a bunch of other different things. At what point were these kids asking you about NIL? Was it after you showed them your Ferrari collection? Like, how dare you? The other side of it is, how dare you tell somebody that you can't, the things you got into coaching for was to develop and help kids become successful. And for the first time in 50 years, you can no longer do that because kids are getting paid. I'm sorry. If I would have made $150,000 coming out of high school, I would have, well, even if I did, if I would have made, made $50,000 coming out of high school, I would have made twice as much as my mother made. You 
to me, that's successful. The whole purpose of going to college is to make money. Period. I go to college to go get a degree so I can earn a living so I can be a man and pay bills. So me getting paid as an 18 year old or a 22 year old is irrelevant. I, I am participating in the same capitalistic structure. So the, t- the problem is they're lying. <laughs> That's the, the problem is that, let me refresh, yes, because an embellishment is a lie. Yes, these kids want to know about how much money they're going to get because they have no fucking idea because everybody's been telling all these random things. So if a kid says, hey, how much does a kid like me, a four-star guard from Warner Roberts, Georgia, how much does that make me typically? That doesn't mean they're trying to get you to outbid somebody. It just means that they're trying to figure it out because the goal is to go to the NFL. And what's crazy is I know four top kids, and all they want to know is they don't care how much money they're getting paid. We lost him. Hey, I saw a comment on here. It says Bama player Tyrone Porthrow is a perfect example of why the NIL is important, and I 100% agree with that. There's that man a, lost millions. There's there's so many things about the NIL that people just say. Same way with recruiting. It's no different. I, don't, I, hated, I hated James's thing messed up because I, I he was on the damn roll. Oh, he was shit. my room all messed up. Let me put this thing over here washing clothes. <laughs> Hold on, man. Got y'all got me out here in, in the in the in the projects. Yeah, sure. Um can you hear me though? Yeah, yeah. 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 So my point is is this they had nobody representing those guys, and how dare you tell somebody they shouldn't be worried about money when you make 10 million dollars? And their mom has a red card from JEA. If you don't know what that means, that means in a couple of days your your lights are getting cut off. Mm-hmm. That kid, you got kid, because and again, you know how you want to know what coaches say. Hey man, I'm not recruiting a kid who don't have a 15 day pay or vacate on their door because the joke is that those are the kids that are the hungriest. Yeah, and what happens is you can't exploit people anymore, and all of a sudden it becomes they're the bad guys, and that's just not. That's just not cool, and that's not that's not the right thing to do. We 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 know like the, the money like and the money's not the money's good, but the money's not as not, not as great. <laughs> oh, I was reading what this guy the, the troll said. That's funny. Uh, I can well, pay somebody to clean my room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the beautiful thing about being an FSU grad. Well, it's also someone that does like I'm, I, and maybe I'm wrong, but anybody that travels as much as James does, or I do, or even CJ, like CJ travels a shit done. I'm still unpacking from the Super Bowl, man. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so <laughs> me, that's the. <laughs> and how many places have you went since then? Then you go to Mexico after that. You also went to Indianapolis after that. Uh, man, I've been I've been in my bed for seven days in the last forty five, and not consecutive. Right? You know, I don't have me convinced that James ain't filming like the 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 new Girls Gone Wild type shit. Just hey, traveling man. everywhere. <laughs> you know, there are stories. That <laughs> have, there are interesting things that have happened on these trips. Not with me, just that I've seen. But it's um. But I mean, all of that being said, is that you know. Mike and them like are getting, and it's why I understand people's frustration. Um, I understand, you know, but like they're really like looking for they're looking for specific guys, man. And and I don't know, I, I do I agree with it? All I care about is winning. I don't know if it's right or wrong. I'm not in that world, but I do know that they want the guys that want to come to Florida State for the reasons that everybody else is saying. And I think it's lazy. It's a lazy excuse that coaches are using now saying that all all these kids want is money. But 
attitude reflects leadership. And it's, it's kind of the thing that every generation says the next generation is worse than the last. It is just so much worse than they were. And nobody looks at attitude reflecting leadership. And how dare you tell a kid? And I'll use a kid I got, I like, I love Jamie French. To, to Nick Saban's point, you're developing kids, right? A kid committed to you without knowing what his NIL was. You had one of the top wide receivers in the class of 2025 that committed to you and that wide receiver coach. How does this kid find out his wide receiver coach leaves Alabama? Do you think an Alabama coach picked up the phone and said, Jamie, somebody's leaving, your coach is leaving? Jamie found out on Twitter just like everybody else. Do you know how Jamie French found out that Nick Saban retired? Yes, the same way everybody else found out that Nick Saban retired. Matter of fact, I remember calling him, and he's like, Coach, it's just a lot in the process right now. I don't really know what to do. I don't know what's going on. So I don't want to hear about that because it's only the guys who aren't – you either adapt or die. And the crazy part is when and when, kid, when everybody had Hellcats or, or Scat Packs, it's things like that. When they were coming out of Alabama, everybody had the same damn car. Nobody batted an eye. It was cool when you were getting those. But now it's like, oh, man, the kids got to be bad. The kids got to do this. Kids got to do that. Well, I want you all to make sure that you get over to Den Media Group right here on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Check out the interviews that he did. And this was back um, when the – damn, listen, let me get mixed up. Back when the uh, – what the fuck? Draft? No, no, not draft. What was we doing in Combine. the – Combine, shit. So back when the combine was going, James got to interview all of these different guys. So make sure that you go check those out. But make sure that you check out his channel because of all the stuff that he's putting. I don't know how much content he's put out in the past two months. I didn't put out near as much. I can tell you that much. Um, and it's a lot of fun. He's 590 away from hitting 6,000. I think I'm 100 and something away. Mine, we'll see what happens. But y'all get us to 6,000. Get him to 6,000. He's going to be giving away money. Um, in multiple different ways. Uh, he's also got the tailgate stuff up. We've all reposted it in so many places. But if you, for some reason, don't see it and you want to come to the tailgate, message one of us. We will send you uh, the link that you can get your tailgate tickets. And I'm pretty sure Florida State's at the point where they're about to tell everybody that the game, the spring game sold out. Because uh, everybody I'm talking to, um, outside of the tickets that I've, cohorted together i'm being told there ain't none left especially for the champions club i, I don't know how many ten dollar missions or eight dollar mission seats are left um but i can tell you the champions club is almost it's almost packed but it is what it is uh if you don't get to go to the game the tailgate's just as fun if not more fun I tell you there's a lot of people that come to it and there's a lot of Former moles, a lot of current moles, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff goes on at the. At and the Jay, uh, Chris, I know you and James are probably have probably seen. I uploaded stuff about the tailgate on Unconquered Eight Five Zero, and on Twitter, and you have had a lot of former moles. There's over a hundred that are on just on Unconquered Eight Eight Five Zero, have inquired about how to get tickets to a tailgate, and they want to help make this the biggest tailgate that you, James, and CJ have thrown. Well, well former players just got to show up. Yeah, they don't pay for it. So let them know that. Former players do not pay a dime to come to the tailgate. I know the ones that have contacted me is like Gregory Johnson. I've had Willie Jones. I've had uh, Kelly Lowry. Well, just let them know, Chip. Um, write them back and let them know that it's not going to cost them a dime. But we let us know they're coming because we'll announce they'll be there. Oh, and you remember how uh, Monday I announced I was giving away one autograph mini helmet? I'm going to do two now. And all proceeds for those mini helmets will go to M uh, <coughs> MF, uh, you know what it is. MFCK. Gotcha. Thank you. <laughs> I know people are going to think that I'm drunk or something. I'm not. I'm just extremely tired. 
No, I ran out of Crown. I would be drunk. I didn't run out. I've got a whole bottle of Peach Crown sitting over there. I'm about to mess with in a minute. Hey, can either one of y'all get me a bottle of uh, the Blackberry? Because there is none here in Panama. I can. Get me a bottle and I'll pay you. All right. Um, but make sure that you get over to Chip as well. Get over to Unconquered 850 on Facebook. Follow him on Twitter at Chip Wesley 9. Um, he's, he's got a podcast coming soon. Um, but we will. The tailgate is obviously April 20th. I don't. We're going to be in lot five. Yes, come, to the, come to the tailgate. And if you have a snow bunny, I'm going to have to take her from you because apparently mine got gamed out last year. And, uh, yeah, you know how that went. That's funny. It did, it did happen. Yes, it did. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate y'all coming on. I'm going to give them about – two or three minutes of this rant that I got. And um, I'll see y'all. I, I got to call James tomorrow at some time. I got to. But Chip also, yeah, definitely let the former players know. that. Just let I us know you. they're coming, and we'll we'll let everybody know that they'll be there. I got you. I'm about to go post it now. All right. All right. All right. Have a good one. All right, so here we go. Y'all can, those who do not believe that Florida State's getting out, this is also towards you. Florida State's getting out of the ACC conference. And if you don't believe that, then you're just not paying attention. The ACC is fucked. Because as soon as we're out, then there comes Clemson, then there comes North Carolina, then there comes Miami. No one's going to stay in this conference when they don't have to. No one is going to get those three schools especially, or four schools especially, because they're worth just as much as any of those schools in this country. In their eyes. Florida State has the most proof of that based off of the numbers that they do. So we will get out, whether you like that or not. And if there's someone that I have a friendly wager with, or even not a friendly wager, there's things involved in it. We do understand that these wagers aren't over, right? Like, Trolling me will do you no good. I won't respond. I don't have to. Hit me up when the bet's over. Don't talk to me about where the bet's at every day because you ain't got shit else to talk about. All you're worried about is a bet that you made with me. That's the only thing that every time the person gets on, whether it's posting or talking or whatever it is, man, if you if you win the bet, fucking great for you. Like, I don't understand the problem. The reward of a bet, if you win, is the wager. Shit talking another Florida State fan makes zero sense to me. Zero. I'm not trolling you because if I troll you, numbers actually happen. When you troll me, the needle don't move, dog. Just remember that and talk to whoever you want to talk to. Ask anybody that you want to ask. You're an insider. You got it. Why the hell are you worried about me? You know everything that's going on. Why are we talking to me? We're supposed to be cool. We're supposed to care for the same team. I don't care if you say the, the pot shot and shit about whomever as far as not doing this, not doing that. You ain't got to come at me because you you're not going to get a response out of me. 
Don't worry about my resources. Take care of your own. I'm not messed up about it. If I lose, I lose. It's going to be a real sad day for some people because I ain't going to lose. But you believe you're going to win, so that's cool. But man, I ain't got no problem with nobody. I love this team and university regardless. Regardless. So it's not going to make me no difference. And it, if you think that's going to hurt me if I lose, it's not. So y'all have a good one. And all the people that want to throw shade at Florida State, that just means we're doing it right again because we got all the haters. If you got haters, you're doing something right. Y'all share this episode. Let everybody know where you watched it. And we will see y'all next time. And go Noles.